When you put so much time into modding, you need to take a few minutes to make your work environment comfortable. Along with organization, there are two things that I require to be comfortable, personalization and peace of mind. This video is going to answer the question, why does your setup look different than mine? Today we cover Mod Organizer Profiles, Manual Mod Installation, Mod Organizer's Appearance, Dummy Mods for Organization, Unmanaged Mods, Storage, Downloads Tab Tragedies, Fences, and Fallout 3 Windows Icons. Here we are going to cover some additional Mod Organizer topics. MO allows you to have different profiles, with different names, different sets of save files, and independent mod activation. Here's a quick overview. Open Mod Organizer. Select the Profile tab on the toolbar. If you highlight a profile, you can rename it using the corresponding button at the right. I name my profiles based on what looks best to me. Activating Local Save Games restricts save file access to the profile at hand. This avoids loading saves that won't work with the current mod setup and thus preventing accidental save file corruption. You can duplicate the current profile or create an entirely new one. All mods will still exist across all profiles, but their activation state and position will be specific to the profile at hand. Sometimes the Download with Manager option doesn't work for Mod Organizer. Installing a mod manually is just as fast. To save time in future videos, I will not be repeating this. Download a mod manually. The mod archive will be placed in your system's default download location. The less preferred method. From MO's toolbar, select the Archive tab. Navigate to the Mod Archive and double-click it. One of MO's various install option windows will open. Install the mod accordingly. Open MO's Download tab. In its own window, navigate to the Mod Archive, drag and drop the archive into the Downloads tab window. Not only will you now be able to activate the mod from here, but a copy will automatically be placed into the directory that you have chosen to store your mods. Simply delete what is now a duplicate of the archive in your default download location. By default, Mod Organizer comes with a few skins. You can download and install skins that others have created or create your own. You will not be covering how to create them. Open Mod Organizer. Open the Settings tab. To the right of Style, expand the drop-down menu and select an option. My favorite is the Dark preset. For this example, I'll be using the well-made paper theme skins on Nexus. Download the archive manually. Open the archive. In the second window, open the Game folder. Open the Mod Organizer folder, and then open the Style Sheets folder. Drag and drop the .qss files from the archive inside. Open Mod Organizer again. You may need to close and reopen it if you haven't. And there they are in the Style drop-down menu. Dummy mods are mods that don't affect the game. For me, creating a dummy folder is helpful for organization. I install mods in groups, fixes, official content, specific textures, so on. Most text guides worth following will have taken the time to set their mods up in a similar format as it shows thought and care. From those types of guides, I've learned to do what follows. When I add mods down the road that correspond with these groups, I also try to keep them together unless they specifically need to load elsewhere to function properly. Locate Overwrite at the bottom of Mod Organizer's left pane and double-click to open it. Right-click in the window and create new folder. Close the window. Right-click Overwrite and create new mod. Title it based on a specific group of mods that you have or will install. Add some dashes to the title or whatever you like to create a border so that you can easily see it when scrolling through MO. When you have named it, select OK. The new dummy mod will be at the bottom of the left pane. To get rid of the X flag and to change the text from gray to white, right-click the mod and select Ignore Missing Data. Drag the dummy mod just above the proper set of mods in the left pane. Now when you scroll through, you will be able to quickly find what group of mods you are looking for. Yes, Mod Organizer has its own category system, but when you organize by categories, you can't manipulate the load order. This way is much more work-friendly for me. Don't be afraid to experiment and find your own methods. Another noteworthy mention. If you right-click the bar at the top of the left pane, you can deactivate the given information. The only columns of importance to me are the mod name, flags, and priority columns. Deactivating the others helps to further clean up the window. I'm sure that you have all seen the unmanaged mods in the left pane of MO. 
All that this means is that there are ESMs and ESPs installed to the game's data folder and that they will be loaded into the game before Mod Organizer loads the rest of its files. This is fine to leave alone because everything that you install to MO will overwrite them where needed. However, because I hate looking at them, I remove them. Open the data folder and delete the official DLC ESMs. We have already created backups of the DLC. Clean them and place them into Mod Organizer. We did this in the previous video. Doing this will not harm the game in any way. You do, however, need to make sure that you leave the Fallout 3 ESM alone. If it's not in the data folder, the game won't work. Once they are deleted from the data folder, Mod Organizer's left pane will appear to be much nicer. At least to me. If you are one who worries that tools may be removed by their authors, which has happened in the past, you may want to store them in a safe place so that you don't accidentally delete or lose track of them. Mods themselves are more prone to removal than tools are, but why not be safe? The method you use will be your own, but to make you aware of what I do. Navigate to the system's download location. Create a new folder and title it Tools. Drop all of the FO3 tool installers, as well as the game installers for GOG owners, inside. I then put this folder into the same location that I store my mod archives. I place this folder here to keep everything related to the game together. You can place them wherever you like. As I just mentioned mod archives, it's important to not accidentally delete them. Easy you think. For some. If you are like me, the downloads tab will drive you crazy at first due to how cluttered it becomes and you may want to start deleting things from it. Here's why you shouldn't. Every mod archive that you install to the game is unpacked and placed in Mod Organizer's Mods folder. Every mod that you store is placed, by default, in Mod Organizer's Downloads folder or in your custom location. This means that 1. You are doubling the storage needs of each mod and 2. You don't actually need the archives once the mod is installed. Or do you? If you need to reinstall the mod due to mistakes when tweaking and you don't have the original archive, you will have to download it again. If you have been around the community for a while, you know that at times, for any reason or even for no reason at all, mod authors may and have removed their mods from Nexus. If you have a favorite mod that you can no longer access, ever, due to the author deleting it, you are going to be pretty upset if you didn't keep a copy. Now. Mod Organizer's Download tab is a direct link to your mod archives. If you delete anything here, it will also delete it from your storage folder and from your system. I've lost many a mods over the years due to not backing up archives that were eventually deleted by their authors and at first due to me deleting the archives from the Downloads tab because the clutter drove me crazy. Remember that you do not want to delete anything from the Downloads tab unless you are absolutely sure that you won't be upset if one day the mod disappears from existence. If you want to hide the archives from the Downloads tab view, you can right-click an archive and select Remove from View. Take caution when doing this. If you accidentally click on one of the various delete options, the archive will be removed from your system. It's easy to do when you are running down a list of 100. Once an archive is hidden, activating the Show Hidden checkbox will allow you to view it again. Fences is an application that allows you to keep more on your desktop while making it feel like less. Clutter can easily lead to stress and make modding less enjoyable. There are free alternatives to Fences, and Windows 10 is making headway with its multiple desktop options. But Fences still seems the simplest and feels the best to me. Again, don't feel obligated to use this. This is just my preference. Purchase fences from the provided Star Dock link. I see no reason in buying the most expensive version, as the basic one works perfectly fine for my purposes. You can also purchase this on Steam, but I'm reluctant in doing so. Once you purchase fences, there will be an activation code on your receipt. Copy it and paste it when told to after running through the installation steps. It's really that simple. I can't show you the process because I'd have to purchase it a second time to do so. Trust me, it's easier than installing most modding tools. The only setting that I change is within Roll Up Fences. Activate the Enabled checkbox and all boxes beneath it. This will allow fences to auto-minimize when they aren't active to further clean up your desktop. To create a fence, click and drag anywhere on your desktop. Let go and select Create Fence here. Give it a title. You can double-click the title later to change the name. Drag whatever shortcuts you want inside the fence. You can make the fences as wide or as short as you like and place it anywhere. If you add more shortcuts than you have initial space for, you will be able to scroll through them. To delete a fence, select the X and choose the option to do so. 
to configure fences differently than I do, right-click on your desktop and choose the option to do so. For the same reason that I enjoy keeping bobbleheads on my physical desktop, I like to change the icons on my virtual desktop to correspond with the game that they represent. You can do this process with any icons that you like, but I prefer these for Fallout 3. Navigate to the Fallout 3 Windows Icons Nexus page, open Files, and download your preference via the manual download option. I use the Fallout 3 Icons Revised Archive. Open the archive that was downloaded. In the second window, navigate to a permanent location for these icons to be stored in. If you change their storage location later, you may have to redo all of your icons due to the file path being changed. Drag and drop the archive's contents inside. Right-click any shortcut on your system and select Properties. Within the Shortcut tab, select Change Icon. Select Browse and navigate to where you stored the Fallout 3 Windows icons. Double-click on one that you like and then select OK. Apply and then select OK again. When I install other games, I will use a specific icon set for them to differentiate between them all. This has been a Gamer Poets tutorial, modding Fallout 3, my way, organized to win. There are plenty of other things that you can do to keep yourself comfortable. A nice chair, putting plants and or merchandise around you, but I assume that's a bit more obvious than what we covered today. If you have suggestions for others regarding mod comfort, put them in the comments and I'll credit you in the pinned comment for the ones that stick out to me so others can easily find and reference them. A big thank you to GP community member Ice Devil for all of the suggestions on the original comfort video, which led to many additions here. I would also like to give a megaton size thank you to Gamer Poets Scribe of Scrolls Chris Medley for catching something in the text that I wanted to add just before I started editing this video. What would I do without you folks? From here forward, it's all about mods and game optimization in one form or another. I hope to see you all in the next video. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for supporting, and thank you for watching.